in touch with you, and you were able to join us. I am so glad We're lucky to, be to catch here you. You're just coming through town now. And right, right, right. Yeah. I'm here from Vermont, and yeah. I'm delighted to be back on Broadway. 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 You know, That's where you began. I'm, I'm, back I'm back coming from modern Rome. Oh. Where? <laughs> modern Rome. Yeah, Rome on the Potomac. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's from, well, we're uh, from both different directions. There yeah. you go. Right. I'm from Vermont. You're from Washington. That's I'm right. from Michigan <clears throat> originally, but I'm a New Yorker now. And welcome, welcome very, very much to Conversation. A pleasure to welcome to program two gentlemen that I'm really very pleased to welcome to the set. I'd like to introduce them, and we'll get into a conversation. On my far left is a dear friend of mine, Norman Curlin, who I first met in the year 1973, way, way back, the year that, uh, the day that Mr. Nixon was inaugurated in his first, second term. And he's got a T-shirt that is obviously able to be seen called Owner, Be Owned, which might give you a clue that he's somewhat aware of the gentleman, uh, Lewis Kelso, the economist of binary <laughs> economics. He's visiting us from Washington. And uh, Norman, it's so good to see you. And we really had a great time. And it's really good. We're I'm glad we can get this program in. And Thank on my you. immediate left, I'm going to say it. You said I shouldn't say it, but I'm going to say it. I don't care. It's Gary Davis. And he's world citizen. And I'm going to say number one. You said I shouldn't say number one, but you were the first person to break the barrier, and by gosh, I think you ought to get credit for that. He is the mm. world citizen. I'll say world citizen. He creates the world passport that people can subscribe to. He's a, a person coming out of show business, and he's got a new film coming up about him. He's a real world, world first-class, world-class citizen, and welcome, Gary. I'm really glad we were able to include you in the program wow. today. Really good to I see you. I think the first world citizen was probably the first guy who came out of a cave and said, you know, ugh, this is my Oog? world. He said, ugh? <laughs> well, well, no, they didn't, didn't speak at that time. Yeah, yeah, a couple I'm hundred. sure he thought this is my world. Yeah, ugh. <laughs> <laughs> More like, ugh. Oh, yeah. And I want to make a sort of obiter dictum or a little thing on the side, and I'll say it now and get it out of the way and everything. But ladies and gentlemen, this is May 10th of the year 2006. And mark my words well, ladies and gentlemen, this is a very special moment in the evolution of universal zeitgeist. This is a major day. We're moving into what I would call the synergetic era as of today, having come out of the paleo-synergetic era, which has been 36 years in length. And I just want to make that point. Won't try and explain it or anything. Just make the point here for the record, as they say. And, I'm, and it, is not, it is the case, but not at all connected, that it happens to be my son's birthday today. And I'd like to give him a happy birthday wish out in Berkeley oh, happy birthday. and so forth. And all of that now over. Welcome both of you very much to the, to the program. I wonder if you could, in a thumbnail way, your background a little bit, Norman, okay? And then we'll get to Gary, and then we want to talk, and we have a little clip of Lewis Kelso we could bring into this. He's passed, so we'll talk about him. But talk a little bit about yourself and your involvement. I know we're all involved with Buckminster Fuller, and we're all involved with Lewis Kelso, among others, but right. maybe you could share a little of your background. Well, a little of background. I, uh, after finishing my undergraduate work at UConn, I... Uh, went into the service during the Korean War as a uh, direct commissioned officer and spent five years in the military, ending up in a strategic air command B-47 bomber unit in, at Lincoln Air Force Base. Uh, had a couple commands in, the, uh, in, in Japan, um, but I never intended to, to make the military career. I was interested in trying to figure out what do I do with my life. So someone said, why don't you go into the law, because you, uh, uh, you can go into many fields. So True. I happened to have gotten a, uh, a lucky, I was on the GI Bill and got a full tuition scholarship at the University of Chicago Law School. Good. And uh, went there from 1957 to uh, the beginning of 1960. Uh, left there to come to uh, modern Rome, Washington, D.C., interested in figuring out ways to solve big problems of the world. Basically, how, you, how people can deal with poverty and powerlessness. I was very interested in, in that. You passed the bar into D.C.? Yeah, I, I, I was a Chicago, lawyer, and a, a and member of the bar. First Spent time out, did you pass it? Uh, as a matter of fact, Harold, uh, the first time I'm trying to remember, I, I, I think I flunked it the first time. John Kennedy. Yeah, as a matter of fact, I times? did. I, I, as yeah. a matter of fact, I did uh -huh. because I, I failed to take a bar exam, 
And if you're going to if you're going to pass the bar, you better take a bar exam, no matter what's. I mean, take a you, bar exam. Uh, we have to take, take a bar review exam. course. Review I'm sorry. course. Yeah, yeah. Like because SAT, because that's yeah. just the way it is. Yeah. And so the next time I did, and, uh -huh. and I had no trouble, and uh -huh. spent five years uh, in, in in government legal service first in welfare and education law. Right, right, right. Uh, and uh, that was very exciting because we're dealing with segregation issues, which I were issues know. that I... I want to just, uh, and, I wanna and, just throw it in, Norm, if yeah. I don't mind, that you were early on down in Mississippi. Oh, yeah, that was, that was later. That was later. great good friend. That was later. That, that was, was later. later. I, I, but yeah. you were involved. Ennis Francis yes, was up in here Harlem, in Harlem. Right, yeah. right, exactly. She's yeah. one of the great... She Absolutely. was probably the, the finest grassroots... Uh, uh, political leader uh, that I've ever come across, uh -huh. and we worked with her, and uh, you you interviewed her. I did, yes, she was yeah, great. Right, yeah. but anyway, that after uh, two it, years, yeah. uh, I was a maverick in government. So You've I was, always been a maverick. I was pushing yeah. things like the guaranteed annual income or the Theobald. negative income tax, knowing that you, you have to solve the problem of poverty. Spent two years and then went to civil rights. I, mm -hmm. I went into the uh, U.S. Commission of Civil Rights. And uh, our project, I was in the general counsel's office, but we had a project in Mississippi uh -huh. to write up a report which has been suppressed from the public. Uh -huh. But we wrote up a report. So I got very involved in 62, 63, uh, 64 Down there. in Mississippi. You were in Mississippi? Yeah. Oh, uh, yes. I was, Marching? Uh, I was, uh, I was working, well, let's uh -huh. say, I was working with Medgar Evers and Good. Bob Moses and, and the uh, leaders of SNCC down there. Stokely, who were, uh, Sto uh, Stokely was down there yeah. uh, to, uh, we, we developed what's called a federal presence theory. So I was a federal presence. You were the federal uh, presence uh, in Mississippi? In other words, you at went... At the time of Mr. J uh, Mr. In, in Kennedy in other words, I, uh, passing the civil rights bill? Uh, well, this is before the civil rights. Year, this is, same this year is, Wallace stood at the... Dick this, this is before, the so civil rights bill was passed after Kennedy's assassination. That's true, but the, see, it was blown uh, in the wind. It, oh, it, it was see, a dangerous place uh, to be. L l l let me say about that, Harold. And when I, I was in law school, yeah. they said it was impossible to get over the white supremacy right. system down right. there, right. which which denied people the right to vote and many other things. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so uh, uh, the, the, the Supreme Court was not going to touch one person, one vote. They said the way, that's what I learned in law school. Did you know Lucy Commissar down there? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Lucy yeah. was down there in 62. Yeah, yeah, right. she was working with And Snick. it was dangerous to go down oh, there. Oh, yeah, oh, you yeah. I mean, people. Real deep no hatred. question, yeah. no question. But anyway, mm -hmm. anyway, uh, the, uh, the, the important thing is th to know is that when you have the right goal, and you go to the place where people are most uncomfortable, mm -hmm. uh, you bring the attention of the world on that, and suddenly a few people lost their lives, some bloodshed. Yeah. But by and large, Change. it was a major revolutionary advance, mm -hmm. and, and, and the system, the poli access to the political system mm -hmm. uh, was, was, was opened up. Uh -huh. uh, now, it wasn't enough. Course. So at We've that still time, got a couple problems. Right, and, 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 and I had, I had difficulty as a maverick even within the S Civil Rights Commission because uh, I was close to SNCC. Uh -huh. And the Kennedy administration at that time were afraid of SNCC. Mm -hmm. They were dealing with the Southern Black politicians. Power. And, and, and so uh, I had to move over to, uh, uh, to the uh, uh, war on poverty. Kennedy was assassinated. Uh -huh. Uh, uh, Johnson was able to enact the war on poverty, I know. and I read the, the uh, Economic Opportunity Act, and I said, this is it. Now, the, the major thrust, this is a way you can restructure the whole welfare system, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. and move or the to, whole economic system, and, and move toward, a paradigm. And maybe. move toward, a, uh -huh. uh, a, a, you, you had money to organize community by community a new constituency in order to uh, have a constituency toward the guaranteed annual income, the negative income tax. Was that Theobald, Robert Theobald? Well, that was, Theobald was the guaranteed that? annual income, and but then the negative, negative income, income tax was, was Milton Friedman. It was Milton Friedman. Yeah, because yeah. remember, I, uh, out of Chicago, yeah. I studied. Did you study uh, with him uh, or uh, I studied under his, his brother-in-law, uh -huh. Aaron Director. Oh, that's uh, this good. was where I, 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 I really got a deep grounding in neoclassical 
uh, economic theory. Do you, do you but it never solved the problem. It, it, it I've was, noticed. It was, There's still a couple of problems remaining. Right. So but anyway. I, I do remember Mr. Nixon in 1972 saying we're all Keynes. Yeah, all Keynes. Do you think right. it would be fair to say that if we were trying to find some of the Schumpeter and all this, would it be fair to say that we're all Friedmanites now? Or are we all anything in terms no, of economic no, theory I, 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 that informs the political process for operating spaceship? Well, uh, let, let me tell you, I think both parties are probably uh, similar in one thing, that they think you can solve all the problems of the economy through wage slavery. Through in other words, wage. full employment. Well, we've been wage slaves yeah, for 200,000 yeah. years. The only years. problem with, no. way, way, with full employment policies is that, is that uh, many people get their jobs in an artificial way. War is one way of, uh, that, that, it, the last time we had really intense full employment was in the Second World War, where Gary served. You had 13 million of the most able-bodied people out of the workforce yeah. after the Depression, yeah. and yet you moved to the fastest rates of growth. You had no unemployment. People Rosie who were the un riveter. Yeah, that's the women right. And people the were factory. trained yeah. on the jobs. They yeah. didn't need. They didn't need uh, uh, to 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 learn training in some school yeah. job training. No, they got on the jobs. My grandfather was a blacksmith. Uh -huh. He was illiterate, so, and he was able to go in. To uh, to build uh, Corsair uh, aircraft, remember mm -hmm. the Navy aircraft. Uh, My yeah. grandfather was a union organizer. <laughs> Good for him. In Detroit. Okay, so l l let's go a little bit more, <laughs> Gary. And and then what happened? Uh, I wrote the guidelines in the war on, on the community action program for maximum feasible participation of the poor. In other uh, words, I, as a result of my Mississippi experience, mm -hmm. I knew how important it was to break the barriers to participation. Economic participation. We live in an economic right. plutocracy right. and always have. Right. So then I went to the West Coast to put together some of the most radical uh, community action programs. Got more money to organizations at the grassroots than to the establishment. Mm. And yet I could see in the war on poverty that it was doomed to failure. This uh -huh. was a time Reagan was governor. Mm -hmm. And you had the Governor riots. In California. At, that's right. Yeah. And you had the riots in Berkeley, and I could see that it was well, only you had a war going in Vietnam. And, and you had the war that. on Vietnam exactly, which, 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 which took which an awful incident, lot of money away from maybe the war in poverty could have solved. Which some of those incidentally, I, I resigned my my commission Over the because Vietnam. of the war on Vietnam. Of course, I wouldn't. I would never fight mm -hmm. in a war that I considered stupid and mm -hmm. unjust. Mm -hmm. okay? Oh, okay. But yeah. but but then what happened was I and was. And you met Lewis. Uh, this, I, I'm, I'm leading to that. Because we got to get a bridge over to Gary. Yeah, I know. Because Gary is not just a pretty face. No, Gary, we have to I, give Gary I, a chance to say a word or you're two. You're right. You he know, did. we've been talking and everything. Gary Gary, Gary has uh, Gary has the biggest. <laughs> well, let because me say, Louis Gary's Kelso idea. and you will be able to get him to where Gary can be brought into the picture, right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. When did you two meet? Uh, okay, we met. When did you in, two we, meet? We met. Do you after, remember? Yeah, it was it was in the seven. It was in in. In seven, I think around seventy, Gary, sixty-nine, seventy, something like that. I think it's a seventy. Six yeah, nine. You right. almost got up to that in your running biography. Yeah. Okay. Now, why don't you tell us a little about <laughs> yourself, and then we can blend the two okay. synergistically <laughs> in a uh, you know in a thing. Because if you let him go, he'll talk for That's three right. hours, there and I'm here to well, you're, you're and the, it'll all be know, good. That's the hell of it. it. You've got to it's stop all, it. Well, I know, but it'll all be good. That's the hell of it. Now, bring us a little bit of I your background. Come on, you know I have two hours. All right. You're gonna get back. All right. Drum roll. You're on. I want to. I want to talk about the Davis Code. Okay, good. <laughs> Talk the tell Dave, us about I the Davis Code. A code uh -huh, uh -huh. And it started back in 1921 mm -hmm. in a little room in, in Bar Harbor. Mm -hmm. uh, there were three people in that room. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, right. My mother, my father, and a doctor. Uh -huh. okay. and, a, and another in my waiting. My mother was giving birth. Uh -huh. my doc the father and the doctor were telling bawdy stories. <laughs> and everybody was laughing. <laughs> And mother you, was protesting. Because, yeah, I would have uh, thought. She said, she, you know, I'm yeah. giving birth, you guys. Uh, Will you stop it? Mean, but she was laughing at the same time. Mm -hmm. And there was a big joke, and out I came. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> came out laughing, Seriously. huh? Came out into a laughing world. I came out um, laughing because, uh, I mean, that was the first, that was the first sound I heard. Right. <laughs> in, 
<laughs> just life. That's not bad. That yeah, started yeah, the yeah. Davis Code. Uh huh. The Davis see, Code. The Davis Code is laughter. Yeah. Okay. And not not laughter at, but laughter with. Yes. It's you know, a big that's difference. very important. Yeah. yeah <laughs> important yeah, yeah, difference. Yeah, yeah. So I figured this is a good world. Uh huh. Uh, everybody's laughing because I'm there. Yeah. So I Happy figured that's yeah. that's what I should be doing. Welcome aboard Spaceship Earth. Not exactly, yeah. and that's what I should be doing. It's a happy world. Mm. So from then on, I said my mission is to make people laugh. Okay. okay. That's a I mean, good if somebody if somebody asked me what my nationality is, mm -hmm. I would say show business. Uh huh. Okay. You know. Yeah, that is international. And that makes me a global citizen al right. already. Yeah, I know. Because yeah. I mean, laughter is everywhere. Everybody yeah. wants to laugh. You right. come into a theater, that's all you want. You right. want to be entertained. Etc. Cetera, et cetera. Well, I sometimes think current politics is something like theater of the absurd. Oh, it's all theater. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, maybe theater of cruelty. It's show business. I told. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, that started me off on uh, on in show business. Uh huh. And my was father. Was your family show business? My father was a band leader, Meyer Davis. And That's so right, forth. famous band leader. Yeah, Not famous just band, a band leader. I mean, he we were. And he's the one who was mother, telling mother, jokes. Mother, mother played the piano. And he was the one telling jokes when you arrived. <laughs> he was one telling jokes. Yeah, uh -huh. he always the had dirty had jokes. No, uh, body, body, not really. Body. Body. I'm sorry. Body. He always had jokes from New York. Uh -huh. He'd come home on the weekends. We say, "What's the latest joke in New York?" And he'd pull out a, a whole list of things and then and then tell us the jokes. Uh -huh. So you can uh -huh. imagine. Yeah. I mean, here's my own father uh -huh. talking about. Right, all the right, time. right, right, right. So right. what an influence I had. Mm. Anyway, uh, I got into this show, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, I don't want to tell the whole story, but no, you uh, can, yeah. I was in a show, uh, in, I, I, I had to study how to you've laugh. Beca you've become an adult. I had to study adult, how yeah. to make people laugh. Yeah. It's not easy sometimes. Yeah. I bet it's <laughs> I mean, not. sometimes people don't want to laugh. They say humor comes off they're a great depressed, deal of They're depressed, they have angst. their this and that, so forth. Oh. Anyway, so I went to Carnegie Tech, yeah. uh, the dramatic school. Okay. And... Um, but you don't do any laughter in Carnegie Tech, at least the freshmen don't. What's it all? All we're doing all is building, building sets for the seniors. Oh, I see. You right. know what I mean? Like pledging <laughs> at a fraternity. I was so good at building sets. Yeah. I was hired by mm. one of the seniors who became the stage manager at the, at the uh, uh, what is it, the uh, Bucks County Playhouse. Oh, down in Pennsylvania. Bucks County, Bucks Pennsylvania, there yeah. in Van Berger, yeah. and I was there. This was show business for me. Sure. And I said, "Gee, this is the place to be." How old you are now? Because I'm 84. No, not now. Then <laughs> I was uh, 20. I was 20. Oh, you're in your prime. Yeah. Yeah, okay, I was yeah. 20. 20. Yeah. And so like here, here I was saying, hey, these guys are getting laughs from an audience. Yeah. Right. You see? Right. So this is where I want to be. So after the th season was over there. I told my father, I said, look, I don't want to go back to college. Mm -hmm. This is ridiculous. I, I, I can build sets, but that's all, all I mm -hmm. want. I don't want to build sets. I want to be on Broadway. Mm -hmm. He says, you've got 21 days uh -huh. to, to, to get a job on Broadway. To get a job on Broadway. Yeah. Huh? So I went to all the chorus calls. I can do a time step. Yeah, you can. Yeah, I can you do, do it now. You want to do it now? Time yeah, step. be uh, careful. No, never mind. <laughs> no, not <laughs> let it go. Let it go. Not, not on mic. Broadway. This is and a, so I don't know why, but they were doing an army show, and I guess I looked like a soldier or something. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I mm -hmm. don't look gay. Mm -hmm. Half the guys, you know, yeah, 95 know gay, percent yeah, are gay. Yeah. Uh, anyway, I got a job in, let's face it, the biggest show on Broadway. Really? Doing what? Danny, uh, I was just a chorus boy. I was what they call a gypsy. Uh -huh. You know, in the chorus. In but the I chorus. was in show business. Uh-huh. Yeah. We're in and on Broadway. I'm on Broadway. Where Danny Kaye was the star. Danny Kaye was the star. Yeah. Nice and, guy. Uh, gradually, uh, let's not go into that. Okay. Uh, gradually, I, I, I became his understudy. Okay. And uh, That's maybe I'm, why I'm, you waiting, I'm waiting for him to get sick. And yeah. Such. The show was a smash hit. Yeah. Every night sold out. Right. Imperial Theater, Broadway. And what are you doing? You're in the chorus and while the, he's doing the star role. I'm in role, the chorus, but, but you let, knew his lines. They no. let me understudy him. Uh huh. Uh, every week there's an understudy rehearsal. Okay. Saturday, so uh -huh. somebody had to fill in for Danny right. for the other understudies. I see. see. That's okay. Why they right. gave it to me. Right. Okay. Because Good training. Said, Look, if Danny yeah. if Danny's sick, it's forget it. Forget mm. it. The curtain's coming down. Yeah. No, nobody. Because can, he was the show. He was the show. Yeah. He's done a. His specialty number was the famous melody in 4F, yeah. the double talk number, etc. Mm. I knew I could do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're just waiting for him to get sick. Just get out of the way he and let me. He was an Iron Man, yeah. this guy. Yeah, I know. 18 months. I know. You know? Oh. And then the war comes along. Uh huh. That's you the know, second war, folks. That's the second, second war. world war. Yeah. And it's a, a draft. Yeah. You know? People yeah. got drafted yeah. in that war. Yeah. So I knew I was go going in. And here I, I said, well, if I have to go in and fight a war, uh, they're going to teach me to fly. Yeah, they sure will. I always wanted, I wanted to learn how to fly, so uh -huh. the government's going to finance my flying. Anyway, 18 months later, two weeks minus 18 months, uh, Danny K. gets sick. Uh-huh. 
He's got a sore throat. We're uh. doing four shows over the weekend. Mm -hmm. Saturday, Saturday matinee, bad show. He can uh. already talk. Saturday night, he's got a doctor in his dressing room. He's two, two shows to come. Sunday. Sunday. And the famous words, you know, I'm taking my makeup off down in the basement where we dressed, and the stage manager comes down and says, You're going to have to fill in for Danny. Boy. The famous words are, you're on. Oh, boy. Oh, <laughs> boy, oh, boy. Now, what went through your head when that happened? I got to wash my hair. Were you? Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, that's good. That's a good practical way to approach it. But was it hallelujah? Or was it hallelujah? Was it hallelujah? I, I got to wash my hair. <laughs> Serious. Was it like hallelujah or was it good grief? No, because I had been, I knew Danny's role, forward, backward, upside down. You he, were confident. He, he never changed. I was super confident. Oh, super. Not only that, but yeah. I... I had been doing Melody in 4F in Philadelphia uh -huh, for a year uh -huh, uh -huh. because my mother was the chairperson of the Stage Door Canteen uh -huh. and the Academy of Music in Philly, uh -huh. and she would put on a big show for the soldiers. Right. So Saturday night, I would take a train and I'd come down, and she knew when I was going to hit the top of the stairs of the Academy of Music, and she would go into Danny Kaye's Overture of Melody in 4F. And then you'd come down the and stairs? And I'd come down the stairs and I'd, I'd do Melody in 4F for the right, guys right. and kill them uh -huh. and so forth. And nobody in New York knew I was doing it. Right. Because it didn't belong to the show. Right, it belonged right. to Danny Kaye. Right. So nobody could do it. Okay. Legally, nobody could do it. Uh -huh. But you were doing it. Well, they, I, I coaxed them into it. Okay, I said, look, right, I said, there's no finale. Uh -huh. Melody in 4F is, mm. is the finale and I can do it. Mm -hmm. uh, the producer wanted to see that. Mm. So they brought me in at 12 o'clock, and there was the piano and the drum and the... But bring night. us back to New York the New night York. when you said you're on. Bring us back to that golden moment, young man. Well, uh, what do you mean I'm on? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still on. Look yeah, at yeah. I know you've been on. Oh, haven't television. stopped. <laughs> you've been on ever since. As far as I've known, you've no, always been on. Let's, let's go. Yeah. Okay. Uh, th that's a brief history of, of what the Well, day what was. happened? You had to perform oh, in New I, York. Oh, I Don't performed in New York. I did the show. Uh -huh. Everybody was calm. Everybody liked it, you know. Know, the, the audience liked it. What are you talking about? I hear you got 13 curtain calls. Curtain calls. I was just, you were a smash. I, I was just coming to that. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, Danny used to get three calls, and I, I wanted to get those oh, three calls. Oh, I'm sorry. Calls. I stepped on your so line. So I, the, I did the melody. How about that? The flame saver. Give me a little sound. I won't go through it. Uh -huh. But anyway, it was a double talk number. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> I got the three calls, but the audience was so pleased that they had a show. Uh -huh. And we're giving a show, and the third call, Danny used to do a little thing of, uh, I don't know, the flames say, get, 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 get some of the curtains coming down, and, so, uh, <laughs> and he'd go off, yeah. you see? Uh -huh. And the audience thought I was ad-libbing now. Uh -huh. Oh, I see. And the audience started, it, the audience, the, it started building. I hear it was a crescendo. In, out, in, uh -huh. out, in, out. I got 13 <laughs> curtain calls. Wow, congratulations, Thank you very much. Man, your career was made. <laughs> it was made. Yeah. Uh -huh. Two weeks later, I'm in the army. Oh dear me, <laughs> dear me. Oh. The only guy who remembered me was Ray Bolger when oh, I got out of the you army. You Ray Bolger. Oh, he was uh, another I was wonder. In, I was in a show three to uh. make ready, but the army changed me. You see, they put me. Uh, I I knew how to fly. Mm -hmm. They taught me how to fly, but then mm -hmm. they put me in a B-17, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, flying mm -hmm. fortress, flying mm -hmm. fortress, mm -hmm. and said, "Okay, now go out and bomb Dusseldorf." Oh boy. And so I went out there, fat, dumb, and happy, five miles up, and bombed Dusseldorf. It's not like not like these guys in Baghdad now who are yeah. on the ground. Yeah. And bang, bang, killing somebody no, on the from ground. Afar, yeah. I was up there. The sky was blue. It's beautiful, and I'm yeah. dropping bombs on cities. Yeah, and people. Yeah. Now you have no training for that. Yeah. There's nothing in your background that allows you to. It's all technical to capability. To allow allow you to even yeah. say you're doing it. Right, right, right. Much less a guy running a missile yeah. from a thousand miles away. Yeah. But then the next day you go out and you bomb Brandenburg, and the yeah. next day you go out and you bomb uh, Dresden, Cologne, and Dresden, they got and so Dresden, forth. firebomb Dresden. And you're firebombing. Yeah. I only saw what I did afterwards when they you took pictures of these cities. Yeah. And I had a, I had a, you a know, transformation. A, a revolution. A revo in my, in revolution. My I said, revolution, how could I yeah. have been doing this? Uh -huh. What is wrong? And then, of course, my brother. Mm -hmm. This was the, the really the turning point in my life. My brother was on a destroyer, uh -huh. in, and you know, ferrying uh, Atlant Len Lease. He was ferrying on this. Yeah, destroyer that was dangerous. stuff on the Atlantic. U-boats? This yeah. guy knew he, he wouldn't make it. Uh -huh. He knew he wouldn't make it, and he didn't. Uh, right. The yeah. uh, Salerno, uh -huh. the invasion of Salerno, 122 ships. His was the only ship that went down. I'll be darned. Well, that, that was such a devastating was lost, blow was, to yeah. us, the yeah. whole family, yeah, and right. to me especially, because Bud, you know, Bud was better than me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I have to say it. Bud, Bud was a great guy, lovable. Everybody loved Bud. 
and we were going to write shows after the, you know, we were going to be in show business. He was a poet, the guy, and, and he died. My older brother died. Yeah, it's sad. From then on, I said, well, what have I got to live for? I've got to stop this mess. Uh -huh. And then what happened when I got out of the, uh, you know, I got shot down and we went to Sweden and then we flew back to England and then the war's over in England uh, in the European theater and then the, and then the Hiroshima bomb goes off. Mm -hmm. The Hiroshima bomb was like a psychic blow to everybody. Yeah. One bomb, mm -hmm. one bomb wipes out a city. There were more killed 76,000 people there were, like that. There were more people killed in the week before with firebombing of Tokyo yeah. than by the bomb. Yeah, yeah, that's right. But it right. did have a it did have an awakening effect because it was ushering in the nuclear. Well, the firebombs destroying age. you know destroying Tokyo with firebombs. Yeah. It was because there was there mm -hmm. was an inrush of oxygen, mm -hmm. and the oxygen then fired Tokyo. Mm -hmm. Right. So right. I mean that was bad enough. Yeah. But one bomb destroys the city. Everybody at the time was saying, that's it. We can't yeah. afford war anymore. Yeah, easy to say. And then, of course, the Cold War starts yeah. between the American and the Soviet Union. Mm -hmm. I said, these guys, these, these diplomats, you know, they're liars. They're hypocrites. Uh -huh. They continue the game of war. Mm -hmm. They don't know how to get out of war. Mm -hmm. I, I want out of this system. Yeah. And that's when I said, uh, you know, the nation-state system is a war system. Okay, you came to a very uh, realization. Had Absolutely. you been, pol is that a political stance on your part? It was uh, socially no, it wasn't, organized. It wasn't a You're political stance so much condition. as a, I no, you know it was. Other than just your own life. It I mean. was a, a stance of me saying who I was in this world. What was my identity? Mm -hmm. And That's important my stuff. only identity that I knew about. I had two identities at this point. I was in show business, right. making people laugh. That uh -huh. was my real mission. Right. And I was a killer. Having dropped the bomb. What and about, why was what, I, was your, what was your attitude toward questions of war and peace when you were in show business? Were you concerned with those questions? No attitude at all. You I, were I, just I, rocking and rolling. Yeah, rocking okay. and rolling. It right. came along. Uh -huh. And you know, in a war, especially Second <coughs> World War, Hitler you know, was the bad, he was the evil guy. We well, were the good guys. Well, he was guys. a pretty evil thing, easy That's to hate. That's right, yeah. and we, you know, we were doing good. Yeah, and the whole country was united patriotically. But, but doing good is one thing, but bombing citizens in cities is not doing good. I heard tell that the rate of uh, deaths from the 19th, the turn of the 19th to 20th century, there used to be for every one so uh, for every one, um, for every nine soldiers killed in the meadow as they fight, one civilian would die, and by the time we got to the end of the century, nine civilians Civilian. would die for every soldier. Died. Well, World War Two, some was sort of a massive kind of yeah. thing where it became a massive state terrorism delivered down upon civilians, women, and children. That so, and the nature of war became even more horrendous and not than it always that, had been. Not only that, Harold, but that's illegal. All the conventions going back to 1868 <laughs> say that you cannot kill non-combatants. But the, I noticed that it's done with great alarming regularity. In the Second World War. In the Second World War, because horrible. Of the air. Dresden, Dresden. And I was part of it. Yeah. I said, my or God, what, what do I do now? Slaughterhouse Five, Mr. Yeah. Then I started studying about how do you get rid of war. Uh -huh. Oh, man, I read books. Emery Reeves wrote a book called The Anatomy of Peace, uh -huh. which everybody watching us should read. It's mm -hmm. still relevant. Mm -hmm. And then uh, how did the United States get started? They eliminated the anarchy between the 13 states. Mm -hmm. And then I studied the idea of world government. Einstein said, you can't give this weapon to competitive nations. Uh -huh. Nuclear is not a war weapon. Mm -hmm. It's indiscriminate in its destruction. Mm -hmm. A war weapon is a weapon that goes from here to a target. It had been. No, but it but is. Well, strategic nuclear, bombing was really a different kind of proposition that came into war making in the yeah. later well, part we of did, the 20th we did, century. We did saturation bombing. Satu you know? That's what I meant, saturation yeah. bombing. Saturation yeah. bombing. Yeah. Right. But it was still a target. Right, right. We had yeah. a target. Yeah. But when that Surrounded big boy, when that big boy descended on Hiroshima, the, the target was the, the whole damn Hiroshima. city. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Women, children. So, schools, so Einstein says churches. this is not a war weapon, uh -huh. and a lot of people were saying the same thing. And and the and the the quote which everybody knows now is that this has changed our way of th this has changed everything except our way of thinking. That's Mr. Einstein. So the way of thinking, what he was really saying was, we still think nationalistically. Mm -hmm. And I said, I'm not going to play this game anymore. Mm -hmm. So I discovered a very in interesting law that you could get rid of your nation, you could get rid of your nationality. Get rid of the nation state You could notion renounce, you could identity. exercise sovereignty yourself. In other uh -huh. words, you were in control. 
This is what the first three words of the U.S. Constitution. You could means. own or be owned by a nation state. You can get out of it. The whole thing. You can. You can renounce nationality itself. And the oh. Ninth Amendment. And the Ninth Amendment is. Tell them about one. the Ninth Amendment. The Ninth Amendment was put in the by Constitution Madison. Constitution of the United States. Yeah, Madison, they, huh? they wrote eight rights, and then uh, Ma Hamilton says, "Look, you, you've left off the main right." And Madison says, what are you talking about? He says, well, what did we do two years ago? Did, uh -huh. We started the government, didn't we? Uh -huh. And Madison says, oh, my gosh, political choice. We can't put political choice in the, in the Bill of Rights uh -huh. because these guys in Maine are going to want their own government, and uh -huh. certainly the Southern, Southerners are going to want their own government. Right. You know, we're having a problem getting this government together. Right. So he very subtly put in the Ninth Amendment, which says, the enumeration of rights in the Constitution shall not be construed to deny or disparage other rights retained by the people. Retained by the people. The retained by the people. Inalienable rights. Those are the natural law rights which yeah. go back centuries. John Locke. That go into the person. Yeah. These mean These the people are sovereign. That's right. No. The, well, the, the sovereignty of every person, not no. some grand collective, exactly. but it gets down to the human level. Uh -huh. Every human being is a sovereign above the state. The when state did that come in? Should, yeah, go ahead. No, 1789. 1789. Yeah. The Constitution. And it's ignored. Yeah. And, and and you'll never see the Supreme Court ever make any mention of the Ninth Amendment. Oh, they uh, hate and it. And it's the most important. <laughs> they do. They, they, they always deny it. The yeah. judicial mindset I wrote a, does. I wrote yeah. my own writ of certiorari to the, uh. to the, to the, to the, <laughs> the court uh, because uh, I came in one time with my world passport. Yeah, we got to get to that. That's not a small matter. Well, it's not a small matter, yeah. but when I renounced my citizenship, I had no citizen. Well, what I did was, mm -hmm. I'm not stateless. I said, mm -hmm. I'm not stateless. That's what you call me. I'm exercising my sovereignty as a human being. Mm -hmm. I'm placing it, I'm verticalizing it. I'm placing it in that area above the states mm -hmm. because there's nothing up there. A world citizen. And I'm, call I'm putting world now in front of citizen. Uh -huh. And I'm claiming to be a world citizen. Because, in fact, you are. What is that? Well, right. we're all world. You're born a world yeah, citizen, really, yeah, but you yeah. don't know it. Uh, it's, it's the right. We're, we're, see, we're living in the 21st century. We're not living in the 18th. That's right. And what has happened is Bucky Fuller's pointing out and all these, uh, you know, Toffler and all these guys are mm. saying, look, the nation state itself was a response to feudalism. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And what happened then? You know, the horse and buggy was the fastest mm. means of transportation. Huh. Now, uh, from uh, the turn of the century, now we had radio, and we had all these technological inventions, and suddenly, suddenly we have a global village, yeah. as McCarsh, uh, McClure. McClure. We're living in a global village. We have tools now which can transmit instantaneously messages and so forth. This is but one of when, them, but, television. But when we think of politically, our minds do a paradigm shift. Uh -huh. Of 180 degrees, and we are in America. And we're back in the 18th century. We're back in the 18th century politically. We're, yeah, we're, uh -huh. we're Americans. By we're French. We're the, Germans. Right. We're Afghans. We're right. Iraqis. Yeah. But the yeah. world, you can get around in two days. You can send a message around in a nanosecond. Nanosecond. World, nanosecond and literally. we're doing it. Yeah. You turn on the television at night, and you're getting world news. What's happening in Afghanistan? Mm -hmm. What's happening in Baghdad, mm -hmm. Joe? What's happening and so forth? Mm -hmm. And immediately the guy comes in. I think it took three to months at the time of George III and George Washington for a letter to get from London it to did, New yeah. York. Yeah. Three months. Yeah. George Washington said to Alexander Framage, he said, look, Ben Franklin, we haven't, re we haven't heard from him for three months. Let's, <laughs> let's send him a letter. No, <laughs> let's send him a letter. You type a letter now, it's in Peking in one second. It's exactly. right there, you know. And yeah, it, and this program is going to be able to be seen everywhere in the world. This really? program, oh you and your words, wonderful. are going out. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, a big transformation. We're getting a little ahead. Well, there's but we have to let him go. Ahead. You yeah, want to But, but I was just going to add to. He's to, got to, something to, to say. That Gary, Gary is also saying that not only are you a world citizen, but you may be a citizen of New York. Mm -hmm. You may be a citizen oh, yeah. of the state mm -hmm. of concentric, concentric, concentric New York. You may be a citizen of the United States. He's not saying you have to abandon uh -huh. the, these other citizenships. Uh -huh. He's just saying that now that we're in a global village, now uh -huh. that there's a global society, uh -huh. it's important to have an institution in which you can have some some justice uh -huh. and freedom, freedom and justice at the global level. And furthermore, right. uh -huh. it's even worse than that, or uh -huh. better than that. Uh -huh. <laughs> Since 1945, the global society is in danger. 
And if we're talking about you survival... You mean from the massive destructive capability we of We have technology. the possibility to destroy ourselves. Well, apparently, that is the case. Yeah. Now. Yeah. 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 I yeah. mean, how now many... We, we've been here 200,000 years, and we haven't had that capability. We were protected in our impetus, as we yeah, just in the cosmic sense, we're there a, that you know, a couple of seconds. That cosmic sense starts bringing in some comprehensive thinking. The human thinking. race is very, very, very... A modern compared to the you know the universe itself. I know 13.7 billion Carl, years. Carl Sagan's uh, cosmic. Did you ever see Carl Sagan's cosmic uh, law, cosmic uh, year? I'm not he sure. He takes the Big Bang, and and now, uh -huh. and he it puts it into a year. Yeah. Well, the solar system was uh, formed in September 17th <laughs> of the year. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, uh, then water came in, and then then the planets uh -huh, uh, about uh -huh. December 3rd. Uh huh. December 3rd. <laughs> yeah. And then and then the dinosaur period was from December 4th uh, to December December 7th, uh -huh. which is three three hundred three hundred million years. Uh huh. And finally, he comes up to. And December December 31st, the last day of the year, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11 uh, 43, <laughs> before midnight. the human race came, uh -huh. and everything that we know uh -huh. in terms of this cosmic year uh -huh. happened in That's the last beautiful. 15 seconds. Yeah, the past 15, yeah. I and mean, it's increasing. It's an and it's increasing exponentially yeah, as you and yeah, I talk right now. It, it, you know, yeah, it's an yeah. awesome thought. We live at a time of qualitative transformation. Right. It might call from some qualitative transformation in terms of our institutions so think, and our relationship to them. See, but I if think, we've inherited out of a historical condition that, by the zeitgeist, has changed fundamentally. Well, you're, you're, you're too intellectual for me. No, well, I don't know. Right? And not <laughs> at all. No, but it's just... <laughs> He's using these big words. <laughs> like zeitgeist? That's not a big word. You know, you're from academia. Means. Well, I'm no, but, building. <laughs> no, but the, mo the point... That's a long curse word. time ago. Yeah. The, point, the point I want to make is every single person who's living today yeah. is in a contract with humanity. Mm -hmm. Because if, if it's true that humanity dies, then we all die, right? So therefore, there's a direct, well, part of there's a direct, all the things that you think you are, all the identities that yeah. you think you are, we'll like na for naught. nationality and religion and, and color and gender, in a great big boom. is all yeah. irrelevant is all irrelevant to yeah. survival. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. right. And what does that mean? It means that we have to re-identify ourselves mm -hmm. on the global level I think we should all civically. think of ourselves that as world citizens. Ta-da! You think it's a good idea? Thank you very much. I think we should. Are you, uh, 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 Gary, <laughs> uh, Gary, just yes or no uh -huh. on that question. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> what? No. Is world citizenship a desirable thing? Well, that, <laughs> is that just? No. Born, is it fair? Okay, we're born into the world. But there's one thing about citizenship that mm. people don't understand. When you claim to be a world citizen, what you're really claiming, you're also claiming to be a microcosmic world government. A micro, you know. And responsible. Citizenship and government go together. You and can't well, be a citizen without government. What do you think of the fellow Lovelock, who's got the idea of Gaia? James You're Lovelock, yeah, James he's on Lovelock. our team. He's, he's the, on your team? He's the coordinator yeah. of our world He's got environmental the, the Gaia concept, and he sees the sure. world as an organism. Yeah. The whole world is an organism, morphic resonancy, sheldrake, that it is a... And, you know, all of the Vedics and the people who have been telling us... Uh, okay, good. That, uh, Please read that. When that you I will. I will. I will. I have to put the glasses on. <laughs> but uh, but all of the world, there are no academic disciplines in reality. There are no national disciplines in reality. Right. They're all constructs of ours, and the situation has changed, and we can deal with them and change them, and we can make things in a way that is in keeping with the best interests well, didn't of Bucky us all. Well, Fuller talk about world history? Well, we all agree upon him? Buckminster Fuller. Of yeah. course he did. Yeah. And he talked about the fact that we were transcending because scarcity is an ontologic from, reality. And, and going from weaponry to livingry. Right. Okay, I've got yeah, here in my hand, about. I hold here in my hand, Mr. McCarthy, <laughs> I have here a list <laughs> of world, <laughs> citi world citizen card. Yeah. And it says Mondo Civic Tech Card. What is this, Gary? It's this seven is, languages. Uh -huh. this, this is proof. See, we're doing the card game. Mm -hmm. The nations play the card game with us, right? Like passports, months, visas, yeah. and so forth. Yeah. Yeah. Identity, yeah. all right. this identity. Ident oh, well, something happened in December tenth, nineteen forty-eight, mm -hmm. at the UN, and I was there in Paris. Uh -huh. They proclaimed the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Amen. Th thank you, Eleanor Roosevelt. And please get it. You can write to the World Service Authority, and get a copy yeah. of it. It's, we have it in thirty-seven languages, mm -hmm. but. The main thing about this declaration is that all nations have signed it. Mm -hmm. In fact, in the Charter of the United Nations, Article 56 says, every nation has to observe and respect fundamental human rights. 
human rights, that means us. Well, do you know the first article says all human beings are born free and equal in dignity and rights? Free in dignity and rights, but they're not born they're right in. in uh, they're born. They're born into the world. And what they have. But they don't say they're born nation nationalistic. No, but they're, uh, they're yeah, not okay. national citizens no. when they're born. All right, some they're of them are born beings. rich and some are born poor. No, that's, that's another thing. He'll that's talk about thing. that. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's we'll, what he's we'll interested. Solve the economic I mean, justice we live in a somewhat, within this framework. We live in a somewhat truncated uh, uh, political democracy. You get to vote every once in a while for somebody, some group that can go in. But we definitely live in a world plutocracy, yeah, it, both na between the nations of the world and between the people within the nations yeah. of the world. There's a small group that have always yeah, ruled since the uh, days uh, of the emperors. Because we allow it. And they still do. Except now. Oh, it's gone to where it's defined in we, we don't claim our rights. Well, all right. So uh, we need a new and, change. And, and Harold, it, it's in the system. Mm -hmm. And the system, the governmental systems, the economic system, the monetary systems were not created by God. It was, that's right. They're it was created, created by, by human beings. That's right. We and these were created as social props. Mm -hmm. And under the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, mm -hmm. they are created these social props like money, mm -hmm. like tax systems, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. governmental systems, like mm -hmm. corporations, mm -hmm. like unions, mm -hmm. uh, like organized religion. They're mm -hmm. all supposed to elevate the sovereignty of the human person mm -hmm. so that they can, they can begin to become fully human. Now. Mm -hmm. One of the problems of war, why yeah. people go into war, why you have revolutions, is because of the separation between those who are haves and those who are have-nots. Thank you. Okay? Mm -hmm. and, and what Kelso, Louis Kelso, who I discovered in, in the poverty program when I was off on the wrong track, mm -hmm. discovered in Kelso is a way in which you can lift up <coughs> have-nots of the world. Uh -huh without having to pull down the halves. That, it's a way of connecting up to the development process. And this is very, very important because one of the causes of war and conflict, class conflict, one of the reasons that you have the class of workers and, and the class of owners. Mm -hmm. and, and the owners are becoming, they accumulate capital because of the economic system money comes into being so that they, if you own capital, capital breeds capital for you. And so the, the gap the keeps getting wider and wider mm -hmm. among nation states mm -hmm. as well as within nation states. The rich get rich and the poor it, get it, babies. It, it, and it's, oh, and I, it, I, 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 have to, I have to interject okay, here he's because, interject with something because a little practical uh, there's, another reason, there's another reason for war in my book. Uh, uh, there's no law to prevent it. No international law. Sure. Ever to There's be no law to prevent it. There's no international law. So between law nations, you have you have a condition <coughs> of anarchy, which perpetuates, right. which right. is the breeding ground of war. Reinhold Niebuhr said, "Moral nation, immoral world," saying that the nation level was the level of That's sovereignty right. to which you owe obedience and so forth. And you're out on the great yeah. seas. You're on your own, pal. So you know, and it's the, only realpolitik and the rule of the strongest. So I come in and I say, Lake, wait rule a minute. Rule of the jungle. This, <coughs> anarchy that, that the nations <coughs> perpetuate in order to govern us. Mm -hmm. It really doesn't exist because the human species is already a system. Mm -hmm. That's what all the cybernetics say. It's a system. Mm -hmm. so I it mentioned is. Stafford that's, what Mr. that's also Mr. Lovelock. I mean, we are a human. There's a human species You here. know how many cells there are in a human organism? Billions? How many? Trillions. Trillions. You're sitting down? You are. Yeah, so yeah. It's true. A hundred trillion cells. Oh, boy. And they're all overlaid with design, yeah. and they all matter. If right. they get run away, it's cancer. They all matter, and they work as a system. Exactly. And they all matter. Yeah. <coughs> you know, everybody is a system, yeah. but the human race itself. Yeah, about a hundred trillion, a and they're all operating. Yeah. And so there's uh, you got ten billion people we're heading for in the world, yeah. and there's and so many of them but can only very very <laughs> dimly appreciate or, or fulfill their full potential genetic given because they're in conditions yeah. where they cannot yeah, right. do it. Extrapolate then to yeah. that to humanity, please. Well, I'm trying. I'm not sure if that's the right jump, but that's what Mr. Lovelock's doing. Well, wait a minute. Your heart's beating, your heart's beating, <coughs> your heart's beating, every heart is beating out here at the people who are watching and this. your hair is growing whether you and want it to or not. their hair is growing and they're going to bed tonight and they're getting uh, up in the morning and they're most going to of the it's bathroom. All, yeah. <laughs> yeah, most, I mean, yeah. We, yeah. we are yeah. a human species. Yeah. That, that's why I say the law, the uh, that this idea of anarchy is false, uh -huh. because right. we're all guided by ecological laws. Right. And if you want to 
uh, spiritual laws, mm -hmm. con conceptual. We all have v value systems. Right. We have words like kindness and courage and love and understanding and, and reason and wisdom and all so those forth. words that our These leaders ignore. All co yeah, but they're conceptual words that we yeah. use all the time. Uh -huh. And the only area where we are at fault is the political side and the economic theory. So I, I say. Would suggest. Everything else exists. Uh -huh. The law, the biological laws exist. Your genes and my genes uh -huh. are practically the same, and yeah. your genes are practically the same as mine, well. and practically the same as a fruit fly. Uh -huh. I don't know, I heard that somewhere. Well. And then biologically, we're the same. We have genes, okay. Uh -huh. And then, then conceptually. And the DNA template over the right. Conceptually, right. We, we have a value system. Right. So That's let's, join the, spirit, let's the join the two by, we know how to make laws because we've got laws up to the nation state level oh. and now we have a whole body of fuzzy laws called international yeah. and we have courts out there called the International Court of Justice and the International Criminal Court the International so Court of so Justice forth. the United States is not wanting to get into because they're the afraid United they're going to be called into the dock the, the United States the doesn't superpower. exist you got to get it in your mind that the United States is a fiction created 219 years ago by 55 guys uh -huh. and it's obsolete it's Which dysfunctional. White yeah. Mr. Bush has his finger on 5,700 nuclear weapons. On here, you want to you want to give your life? He says, "I'm in command. I'm the decider. I'm oh. listening to God." The decider is yeah. that funny? That's <laughs> ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You're and the so, decider. Uh, We're the decider. Uh, uh, well, yeah, uh, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, I want, he's got I some things. I want he's got to address. Let, and you have put forth the world passport. We'll get to that. But you want to. I want to. I want to address the economic roots of conflict. How would you? Rather have, would you rather have full economic power, power or, over or, your or own being, or would power. you rather have the full power to vote? Uh, there you go. The political e power is less significant than the economic in real terms, well, and we live in a world of great class distinction yeah. in all yeah, political look, entities around the world, look, including the world the itself. Founders, and that's the main problem. Look, the, issue, the issue of government. We need a new economic system, I yes, would think. Yes, yes. The of issue thinking, of government you? is an issue of power. Okay? Yeah. And, and the founders understood this. Mm -hmm. Power follows property. And once you understand the nature of property, mm -hmm. it gives you control. You, you, you have property in your own body. Property is synonym for the individual, the free individual? Could it be a property? I'm Could saying property oh. is a set of relationships. Okay. Okay, it's nothing you can see. It's a set of relationships. So if I own my own body, the fruits of my body are mine. And if somebody else owns the fruits, I am their slave. We okay. had chattel slavery. Okay. So that Not as you move history. as you move through the in the synergistic uh, revolution that's taking place now, mm -hmm. this, uh, that uh, that Bucky Fuller described beautifully. We're all we're all tuned in to the work of Buckminster exactly. Fuller and Kelso and Lewis Kelso. The two together. Way. The two together. Yeah. Bucky showed how technology uh, the process is redesigning your tools to do more and more with less and less human effort. He was a con okay? comprehensive, anticipatory right. you design moving. science and using good design in order right. to answer the problems right. and to take you, the measure of the world. You are moving from, mm -hmm. a, a, from a primitive, labor-intensive world for tens of thousands of years to in, in the last century or so, you are now moving into the, into the technology revolution in which you're vastly more productive. Your capital is so much more productive than the human being mm -hmm. in terms of its ability to produce wealth. You, all you, like Bucky Fuller says, all you do is eliminate all your, your technology, your infrastructure, your, your factories, your, your, your machines, and suddenly billions of people are starving to death. That tells you the productive capacity of the tools that we invented. Which so is increasing. Let me, let me put this up. This is in support of you, right? Right. So hold it up, and this is Lewis Kelso's chart, and this is the thing that shows for the United States, but the trend of the United States economy is applicable to the trend in the world, the which is somewhat world. behind. The so whole this world. is a trend applicable to the human society, and this is Lewis Kelso's chart. Yes. We had Fuller's chart showing which that. Which is similar. But it, well, it's, it's different. But this is, you explain it, Norman, this is uh, 1776, uh, Thomas Jefferson, the start of the Republic. Very primitive agricultural 10%, economy. This line under here 
is yeah. the import to production by something other than human labor. By th those we were had the a tools, the productive trees capacity. That were to be cut down with hatchets. In other words, you had you had animals and you had very primitive tools. And then, and this at, is, at the and time then it goes of the now, industrial yeah, revolution, you can't talk over yeah, you can't talk job. over. Yeah. So yeah, no. uh, one talk to the other. Okay, so okay. this is this is look, this is the beginning of our republic. This is coming into the modern. That the that the te the you, technology would you like or me something to other. It or oh, you want to do it? Okay, yeah. you try it. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. What 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 was occurring was that can they in come in primitive on it? in the in a primitive hand tool economy it, it, that all you could do was produce for a, a bare subsistence living for people. Uh, what's happened is as a result of not just the the uh, the industrial economy but the high tech the post industrial society you're you're developing tools in which you can we have the capacity to produce in universal abundance. Yeah. We're not doing it because of our institutional structures. That's where Louis Kelso came in. Yeah. He looked at the money systems. He looked at finance and he saw that in the money systems and in finance we were creating new tools that were going to the same people. What Kelso was saying, if people could be connected to ownership to those tools the fruits of ownership, the profits, instead of going to the, to the rich to make them richer and richer, it would go to all the people in the world. You could solve the problem by connecting the people up to the process of change and to the fruits of capital. The way things are actually being produced, which is by something other than human labor, which had been the case throughout exactly, human history. Exactly. Now it's something else, and those things of production, those technological systems of production other than labor, are all owned by a plutocratic class yeah. owns that the financing of the new c capital technology is done through the earnings of capital which is people have nothing up and all they have is a labor relationship to production and it's unworkable and yet it is assumed by all of our political parties and the it's, established it's system. unsustainable it's Carol. Unsustainable. The, 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 the social security and medicare is now a pay-as-you-go system it's all coming out the backs of workers or the people who hire them it, 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 the, the unfunded debt, as the baby boomers come in and future generations, you can see that, uh, that in Social Security alone, it's $12 trillion of unfunded liability. Yeah. And, and another $62 trillion for Medicare, even before the, the, the prescription drug benefits. This amounts to a hidden debt of you, you, every American, and every newborn of $250,000. So we have to do something different we because we're not relating people the way things okay. are actually being produced. You have a book. Let's let them see it, if you don't That's mind, because the trouble is we don't have enough time. I know. We need it. about 40 hours, okay? Let's go. But here's it. a book that they want to know about, okay? And you got a book or two you want to let the folks know about, too. So let them know about this. This, this is, is capital homesteading. Take the idea citizen. they gave people a homesteading stake in land, which was the right. principal means of production in the 19th century, for a few couple decades, and then it closed, and it's now all owned by about 5% of the and population. And this will save Social Security. Without, right. it, it, it will not cost the, the, the citizen. Every well, man, woman, and child would be able to go to their local banks and get $3,000 of interest-free credit uh -huh. created by the Federal Reserve System right. flowing through the banks so that when the boss needs to, to invest, he has to go to the people mm -hmm. and say, please buy Okay, it is shares. laid out in the book, and they're going to give you links to your website where the book is there. It's available in the, in exactly. the details of and, that. And it's now, available through, through, through Amazon.com right. and Barnes & Noble. And you've got the CESJ Center and for Economic exactly. and Social Justice Building on Fuller and, Flu and, exactly. and Kelso. And this, he, you only just got a chance that you issue an international passport. Why don't you let them know quickly about that? We issue and that it's possible to get a passport by which you can travel around this world, and particularly people who are stateless Where can, can get. Yeah, you can show it. Let me <laughs> hold it up. I mean, you tell me about it. You started this back, and we only got about uh, eight minutes left, so this let's get world, it in quick. Yeah, this world passport is issued by the World Service Authority which is the administrative agency of our government. Our government was declared in 53, uh, September 4th, 1953, after we registered 750,000 people uh -huh. as world citizens. We 750,000? 750,000. You've registered them? Yeah. They as were, world citizens, they and they were stateless often? No, they no. were from all over the world. Okay, okay. They, Some of them were stateless or in positions We have no idea. We don't care. Okay. They registered as world citizens, uh -huh. so you can be stateless or not. It doesn't matter. Uh -huh. 
Uh, but when they were saying, we now have a new allegiance, mm -hmm. and but we did, we didn't figure it out that we that uh, world citizenship and government go together, so we decided after five years that we would declare the government of world citizens, okay. which allowed us then to take the Declaration of Human Rights and issue documents based upon certain articles. And the means by which people who are interested in this, what you just said and so forth, are going to be available at the end of this program. Take your pen and pencil oh, out. Yeah. You well, can contact them on the internet, the worldservice.org. Worldservice worldservice.org is the site they you can go they to. Can download, they can download the application forms for world citizenship, the world passport, I can see and, in the and, monitor here, the yeah, world passport, yeah. uh, the world ID card. Mm -hmm. It's all in seven languages. It's okay, it's very good. Congratulations yeah. on having done that. The problem being, Gary Davis, is we're running book. right down to the end of time. The curtain's about to ring down. Show so we've got to show him the books <laughs> quick. we got a book of Gary Davis's here. we got one more book that he wants to show. This is show and tell here on conversations now this is what's this book quick this we only got book a couple is the minutes beginning quick. of the story fast and how no, i found fast 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 uh, fast fast travel to india india, india, india and fast, back fast, on the world passport the first world passport <laughs> this is a very interesting book a film is going to be made on this this is the one they're shortly. making the film about this your is, life there's yeah, a major right. film being built about this man's life and this which is, is a incredible. manual this is the manual for world citizenship it tells you how to do it how to talk about it how what the education is and how to talk back and everything. I wrote this because of the people who have the documents uh, and they wanted to know what the information was to how to use them. Very good indeed. There's a film being made about your life and well it should be. It's going to be a heck of a film. Let me see one more. No, the other one. You're going to show the binary because this is tied into the binary economics that you on Conversations will be uh, well aware of. We have talked about it all the time, Bob Ashford and Robert and Rodney Shakespeare. And this is a binary economic system that ties in and is anchored perhaps by philosophically some of the perceptions of Buckminster Fuller, who was a hero to all of us and to all good thinking people, seems to me. And it's a pleasure to have gotten some of all this <laughs> in in a conversation. And we thank you both very much for appearing and thank coming on to the Harold. program. Really good, and thank you great. very much for coming in. I'm sorry we ran out of time. We had to pick up the tempo, and it's terrible. <laughs> well, and that's all right. I mean, I he, think he talked too much. That's why. <laughs> I know. I used to say that once you get past, uh, once you get past uh, the pearly gates, there'll be no deadline. You, know, you, you want go, it to right. be racing, do you Absolutely. think? There you go. But but I wonder if we're you trying can. to break the shackles of time. You're trying don't to break the Davis Code. Because <laughs> don't forget. You'll be Davis happy Davis. here when you're before you go to the pearly gates. Well, we're getting there. I think they could run those credits now, and then let's leave the uh, contact information up for you. You've got CESJ. That's uh, dot org. Mm -hmm. And you have WorldService.org. World WorldService.org. All one, one word. And Ga GaryDavis.com. GaryDavis.com. The yeah. American Revolutionary Party. You forgot to mention. US. You forgot to mention the and American Revolutionary Party. Party. You, US. you subversive well, character. That's because Revolution. Gary took up all the time. He took yeah. up all the time. And, and, <laughs> couldn't get a word in edgewise. And wise, then huh? third, the yeah. Global Justice Movement. Global Justice Movement. .org. Yeah. That's and in I would, Canada. Right. And uh, we have a little fledgling website if you want to go where you find information about these men. That's Channer.tv. That's the host of this program. That's me. Oh. And it's Channer.tv. And I'll say once again, this is a monu monumental day. It won't mean anything to except me and maybe my dog, who I've been talking to <laughs> about this. But it's uh, May 10th of 2006. This is a major day. We are now slipping into the fully synergetic era, having lived 36 years within the paleo-synergetic era. And we thank you, Buckminster Fuller, enormously for your tremendous pace-setting work in the understanding of the evolution of universal consciousness, of which we are a part, and part of the transformative moment in which we find ourselves. Thank you very much for viewing. Thank you, gentlemen, for coming. Great pleasure. So we've got about, uh, four, four, about 20 seconds left. So you can say something maybe we didn't get to or something. Or whether they're going to yeah. put the graphics up. Put the graphics well, up uh, with the contact uh, yeah, information. Yeah, if they want to know the website of the yeah. film. I think that's important. It's yeah. www.onefilms, mm -hmm. one word, mm -hmm. dot com. And uh, they'll see uh, uh, an outlaw of the film and, and, mm -hmm. and what it's all about and so forth. And we think that it's very timely that this film goes out because it's a uh, idea which time has come. Well, it's a, it's a film about your life. And your it's life is that. so colorful. And it mm -hmm. encompasses 
so many different things. I don't see how yeah. it can be anything but a great. No, I hit think it'll be a great because film. he, you, you your life it. story is just an amazing one. And, and, and as I've come to know it, yeah, you know, showbiz. it's the kind yeah, of showbiz. <laughs> <laughs> showbiz here on planet Earth. Yeah. Showbiz. Go ahead, Norman. Yeah, yeah. 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 Get him in. And, the and, and what I'd in. like to say is, I, I agree that the film is is very critical because it does open up the uh, uh, the, the new world. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I want to talk about just just that we're not talking about capitalism. We're not talking about or the greed of capitalism or the envy of socialism. We're talking about a just third way, uh -huh. which includes the idea that the sovereignty, and this is basic to Gary's work, it's basic.